Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be this Hutch makeover. I am so excited to show you guys this. Y'all have actually probably seen a sneak peek on my Instagram and also on other videos on my channel. But in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the whole process of redoing this. Um, really quick, I just wanted to mention, try to pay attention to the detail of how it looks right now because it looks totally different at the very end and you can really see the detail in this hutch um, when it's painted. So just try to remember how it looked before. I'll also give a few before and after clips at the very end, but Anyway, we're gonna move on. Um, first thing we are going to do is tape off all of the glass. So I chose personally to not take the entire hutch apart and paint it right in my dining room just because I have two young kids and it's just so much more convenient to just paint something that is just already put together. So I just taped off the parts that I did not wanna get paint on and I'm going to just take off the um, like knobs, what are those called? Hardware. <laughs> I'm gonna take off the hardware and then we're gonna move on to painting. So now that I laid down a sheet to make sure I didn't drip any paint on my floor, I am going to go right in with the Kilts chalk paint. Um, this is the color ready to use white, so it's very pure white. Um, there is no yellow to this white at all, I promise. So if you like that really bright white, this is definitely the chalk paint you're going to want to get. Um, and honestly, this chalk paint has lasted me so long. I have, um, I did my full uh, farmhouse table. I also painted my bar stools with the same can of paint and I still had enough to finish this hutch. So to me it was super affordable considering I got three large projects done using this one can of paint. So I will link the can of paint down below in the description box in case you want to make sure you buy the exact same one I bought. And by the way, the paint brushes I'm using are the super cheap um, pack of like three for $3 at Walmart. They're super affordable and these are the ones I always use. I love them, they work wonderful. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on, I put my feet up So right here you could tell I tried to use the roller to paint this on and it just was not working for me. Um, the best way for me personally to use chalk paint is with a paintbrush. Um, I like the way that the brush strokes look better than with a roller. Um, so I just had to use my hand and just <laughs> hand paint this on and even though it was a lot of work it was totally worth it um, y'all I'm in love with the way this hutch turned out but I just wanted to show you guys a up close on how it will look when you get started so don't be alarmed when you see this because this is exactly how it looks up close um, I wanted to show you guys so y'all didn't think that from a distance everything just looks so perfect all the time because during the process of painting something it looks a hot mess honestly but the more you paint the more you finish it the better it looks so don't give up on your project if you see it looking something like this and we just sing along and i can't help but feeling just loving this moment can we stay here forever Thank you. 
so one of the best ways I found to use chalk paint is to start on the edges and kind of like brush my way um, each direction and then go in with a, a lot of paint and go back and forth. This gives that very seamless brush stroke look. Um, and also always start with like your creases first. So like you can tell I'm really getting the paint in each little section first and then going through and smoothing it out with one solid brush stroke. It's kind of hard to explain um, in words, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. And you definitely want to make sure that your chalk paint is going in the same direction on each individual spot. Um, if you go in all different directions with your chalk paint, you're definitely going to see those brush strokes and it's not going to be as seamless as it would be if you like went along with the wood grain, if that makes sense. Um, but this is all like a learning process for me, y'all. I have not used chalk paint that often, and honestly, I have not watched any videos on chalk paint and how to use it properly. I'm just going off of what I've tried and sharing it with you guys. So just keep that in mind. I am no professional. I'm just sharing with you what I choose to do, um, and it turned out great, so I'm not complaining. I honestly think I did a pretty good job considering I did this with my kids at home <laughs> and all by myself. Um, you'll also notice that my shirt is inside out, and that is because a subscriber um, gave me like a pretty good tip when you're painting to turn your shirt inside out just in case you get paint on it. Um, you can still wear it, and it's not like ruined. So that was an awesome tip. So thank you to whoever said that. I am definitely going to be using that more often. So right now I'm just speeding this up really quick to kind of just get through painting all of it real quick. And then I'm going to move on to the second coat. And when you start seeing the second coat, you'll definitely see why I am so happy that I decided to keep going because it really comes together when you put that second coat on. Um, once again, still going with the same brush strokes that I went originally, keeping it all in the same direction. and I got up to check to see how my progress looked and I found a handprint. <laughs> Amaya came over and put her hand on it not realizing it was still wet. Moving on to distressing the hutch, I used a wet washcloth to do this and you just rub back and forth until the paint kind of peels off and to me this gives the most natural look but I will not lie to you guys, this is the most exhausting part of the entire project. Um, distressing took me a total of two days. I did some on one day and then I finished the following day because my hands were just tired. I'm not going to even pretend it was easy. <laughs> um, I know you can use other methods to distress, but like I said, this is my favorite way to give a really natural looking finish. Um, but anyway, I'm going to continue to do, do this and then we're going to move on to the second coat on the inside.
So whenever I was distressing, I was trying to really focus on areas that would naturally get distressed on their own and try to make it as realistic as possible. So I didn't want to overly distress, but I also didn't want to not distress enough, if that makes sense. You just kind of find that happy medium. And um, like I said, you just rub back and forth with a washcloth and it gives it that perfect worn out look. Um, so now peeling off the tape, I realized I got some paint on some of the little wires, but it came right off with some Windex and a paper towel because it's just chalk paint. It comes right off with soapy water. So just keep that in mind. If you get it on something that it's not supposed to, it will wash out. All right, so now I'm moving on to putting on the wax. So I have never used this before, so this is my first time, um, and I'm gonna give you an honest review on it. So um, first thing is you wanna use a lint-free cloth. I did not have one, so I used this sponge that I got from Dollar Tree. It's like a bathing sponge, um, and it had a little bit of lint on it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> So I was like a little worried when I first wiped it and I seen a little bit of lint come off But once I got like the wax on the sponge, it was fine Like there was no more lint anywhere um, And basically all you're gonna do is just rub it in um, it kind of comes off a little chunky I don't know if it's supposed to do that or if it's just the one I bought um, But this is the Waverly brand it is in the color clear now It does have a like yellow tint to it. So it does make the white more of an off-white um, I'm happy it did that because now it matches my table better But if you don't like ivory color or like an off-white you definitely don't want to buy this wax But so far so good. I really loved it and I did a total of two coats Moving on to the hardware I did decide to keep it original and not try to spray paint it or anything And I'm so glad I did because I feel like it just kind of helps add to that antique look the handles are actually really worn out some areas are very dark brown and then some have like a gold tint to them so it just naturally looks old and antique and y'all know I love that look so I am just so happy with the way it turned out another thing I wanted to point out is the detail and how much you can see um, just like all the line work and all the creases and just the detail of this cabinet is just so much prettier now that it's painted white um, also like the wires on the windows you could barely see that before and now it just pops Alright, so that is going to be it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this makeover. I hope you love it just as much as I do. And if you want to see more DIYs from me in the future, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. And also, um, keep an eye out for a video I have coming soon. It will be a decorate with me and I'll share with you how I decorated the space around this hutch. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye y'all.